The Kuburg Power Station's Unit 2 has been offline since mid-January for planned maintenance. In a short while, ESCOM Chief Operating Officer Jan Oberholzer will provide an update on Kuburg's unit, Kuburg Unit 2's outage. Uh, let's take a listen in. So to date, uh, all the spent fuel has successfully been unloaded. And the majority of the work planned in the early part of the outage has progressed as per the outage program. Now, on the steam generator replacement work prior to the start, we've decided that prior to start of any irreversible work, that Eskom, ourselves, and our main contractor, Framatome of uh, France, that we perform a final review to ensure that the steam generator replacement work would be completed at the expected quality levels and in accordance with, you know, the RT schedule that we've uh, set ourselves. Now, the review unfortunately concluded that there is a high risk now that the unit being returned to the grid will be later than currently planned for. Now, what is important is then to understand that due to the important, uh, due to the potential severe impact um, of returning this unit later than the end of June. So we have committed as Kuburg to the generation production team that this unit will return by latest uh, end of June. So we then made a decision then to defer the steam generator replacement work and scope to the next outage. But we always need to understand that it was a project that was part of normal refueling as well as maintenance work. So we have now decided to, to shift this project out to the replacement of the three steam generators to around about August next year. Now, as I said, this is then to avoid the risk of impacting electricity supply during the high wheat demand winter period, which will start, you know, relatively soon, you know, end of end of April and May. So to make sure, we need to make sure that unit uh, two of Kuburg return by June to make sure that we reduce, you know, the possibility of load shedding. So it's definitely the, the decision was made to ensure that the risk is, is, is reduced. So this deferral, I think it's important to understand, does not impact the safe operation of Kuburg, number one, and also that it does not have currently a negative impact on the life extension for Kuburg. Now, these two units, both of them need to have steam generator replacements done successfully in order, you know, to uh, be able to uh, extend the life of Kuburg. So just to conclude, we are busy currently with an outage. We had a project, uh, the replacement of the three steam generators on unit number two. We unfortunately, when we reviewed, we concluded that there's a high risk that we will return this unit late. And this is, the decision then was, in order not to have a significant impact, you know, 920 megawatts um, beyond the time that is committed on the ESCOM you know, generation production plan, that we rather defer this project then to the next cycle, which will take place next year. So. I would like then Rido Van Bakardin, our chief nuclear officer, just to add a little bit more in terms of the technical details uh, that is uh, that we would like to share with yourselves. So Sigonati, thank you. That is just by means of an introduction. So if we can ask Ridwan then to come in and take it further, I'd appreciate that. Thanks, Ridwan. Thank you, Jan. Um, thank you for that introduction. So. In terms of the the outage um, and the the where this this what this means for us um, and what we can state based on, on on where we are at present is that the we are we are comfortable that the condition of the SGs uh, the ones that we we now um, were intending to replace during this outage and and we've known going into the outage that there's a high level of confidence that the SGs are 
um, the steam generators are acceptable for continued operation um, and that they can be managed until the, the end of the normal life of the plant, as, as we've been doing for the last few decades already, where we inspect every outage uh, to confirm that the condition of the steam generators do remain, remain acceptable and, and uh, as per the, the maintenance uh, program for the, for the station. And, and just to confirm what what uh, Jan has also indicated in terms of the the, the life extension, um, really the, these issues need to be replaced by the end of uh, the, the current life of the plant from from a life extension perspective. And that uh, for unit one is 2024 and 2025, the normal the original life. So um, ju just in terms of that fits into our overall um, life extension currently busy with safety studies and, and the final safety report that um, will be submitted to the, the nuclear regulator by the middle of this year, and that, that work is on track. Um, and that really prompts the nuclear regulator's uh, review period um, for, for approving the life uh, extension of the plant. So this, this um, shift, while we would have wanted to do at this outage, I think the, the, the steam generator replacement, we do still have the opportunity in the in the next few outages to, to do that. So it's really about ensuring we do it in the window that works best for ESCOM. I think just, just the other part of the uh, the life extension work is as part of what we submit to the regulator later in the year. Um, their process will also involve uh, public engagement. I know there, there, there has been some confusion around exactly how the process works, but there, there will be a public participation, a public engagement process as, as part of that. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Jan, and uh, thank you, Shikanati. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we that that is Ridwan Pakadin. He is the chief nuclear officer for ESCOM. That's his title. Uh, we do have our other colleagues from Quebec on the call as well. Uh, I have so far two or three questions that I am going to read. The statement has already been emailed uh, to yourselves and I have sent it on the WhatsApp groups. Uh, those that need voice notes, please do everything to record the conversations from my colleagues and they have the answers to all the questions you have. Kyle Cohen of News24 wants to know, Mr. Oberholzer, what are the specific factors that were identified that may have caused delay past the planned end date? Uh, Jan, that's a question for you, but let me also read the next question from Antoinette Slavet of Report. What is the plan with Unit 1? Will the replacement proceed as planned or will also be deferred? Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Sigonati. Kyle, um, some of the aspects that we have identified that is putting, you know, the successful, you know, outage at risk if we should we continue with the SGs are some of the facilities that needs to be completed. Um, that has given us some headaches. So, um, and I would guess that is basically the main reason. So the, the contract of Framatone requires certain facilities. Uh, as soon as we start cutting, you know, the pipes and getting ready to um, to take the steam generators out and all the other work and then to bring it back. So we need certain facilities that has been approved, um, you know, for use. So that has been the main reason why we have decided, you know, it's not complete. There's a risk, uh, you know, unfortunately, of having it complete at the time that it's uh, required. Because if you if you if you take the decision, you know, to cut the pipes and to proceed uh, with the uh, with the removing of the steam generators, there's no turnaround. So, uh, and we believed at the time yesterday when we made the call, you know, very late uh, last night that the risk is too high. So it is mainly related then to the facilities. Antoinette, uh, in terms of, of unit number one, that will proceed. Um, that we call it unit number 126. 
um, that is planned for the end of um, of this of this calendar year. So that is still on plan to proceed. So uh, we had a discussion last night with uh, the uh, contractor Framatome. They have confirmed that the other three steam generators, as we referred it uh, to units number four, five, and six, four and five that will arrive in the country in August, September, and the last one, unit number six, uh, in November, December. So the outage is planned for late, as I said, in this calendar year, and so we will proceed. So the, the plan is to proceed to implement and to replace the steam generators on unit one at the outage at the end of the year. Thanks. Thank you, Jan. There is potential for some confusion there in what you have just said. Kubrick, you, uh, Kubrick has got two generating units, two and one. Each unit has three steam generators. Can you repeat what you just said, Jan, about the about unit one and steam generator replacement? Thanks, uh, Sigunati. It was never the intention to confuse anyone. Sorry, I do apologize. So we have the two units, unit number one and two. Um, so unit two is currently on an outage. So, and it has three steam generators and we refer to it as unit one, two and three steam generator, unit one steam generator two and steam generator three. Those are all on site and they're ready to be installed. Now, on unit number one, that is the next outage for the next unit, 126, that we plan for the end of the calendar year. We also need to replace three steam generators, and those steam generators we refer to as steam generator four, steam generator five, and steam generator number six. So that is what I have referred to. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. That, that clears it. Uh, the next set of questions comes from Terence Krim of Engineering News. When will Unit 2 be returned to service? Is that time frame in line with normal refueling? What are the cost implications of the deferral? Jan, thank you. Thanks, Sigunati. I would uh, suggest that Ridwan takes that uh, question, if you don't mind, Ridwan. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Uh, do so and I, I think I may have forgotten to say good afternoon to everyone so apologies for that. Um, so unit two, uh, the return to service, uh, we, we've got the schedule and last night obviously we made the decision so we, we uh, the plan indicates return in uh, in June of this year and um, so we, we're still heading forward with that. Um, in terms of the, the, the cost implications for, for the deferral, um, and I, I, maybe just to, to build on that, in terms of uh, normal refueling, um, the, the time frame for, for an outage, it depends on the work that you're doing in that outage. So this outage, yes, it, we're doing the steam generator replacement, which is the, the, the big project. But in, in, in the outage, we also have a lot of other work that's happening in parallel with that. So we, we, we're doing a lot of the, uh, the, the main valves and the pumps on our primary system. We're doing um, maintenance on those. We also replacing the reactor pressure vessel head, and that, that's also been mentioned before, which is also one of those items linked to, to life extension. So that, that project is still proceeding. It's, it's, it's less um, time intensive than the, the steam generator replacement project. And then there's a number of other modifications, both on the, the reactor side of the plant, but also on the turbine side of the plant that we are busy with. And each of those activities are, are quite significant on their own. So many of these activities run in parallel um, and, and uh, therefore, just taking one out doesn't mean you, you shorten by that duration, but um, the, the, the plan is, uh, well, um, takes into account that we, we plan to do many of these activities in parallel. Um, in terms of the cost implications to, to the deferral, um, we still, we, we need to assess that to understand, uh, um, you know, if there will be any cost implications from an outage perspective, obviously now we we've, uh, need to look at um, the, uh, the, the the fact that we're going to have to do this work, whether in this outage or the next outage. The fact that um, we had started with some work, some of that can be banked um, for for next outage. Uh, so some of the the, the changes, um, which are not the main steam generator replacement, that that can be banked. But there are, are many other um, you know, activities that, that we cannot obviously continue with, but the intent is to, to complete. I think we've got about 
over 20 smaller what we call daughter modifications that we we still intending to 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 proceed with um, in this 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 outage which are linked to the steam generator replacement so so the, this outage is it's an, a refueling and maintenance outage which typically um, can range from anywhere from as as, as little as, as around uh, 40 days or so for only doing refueling but when one includes maintenance we typically talk uh, 80 days upwards, and because of the the scope of work during this outage, and the, the and a lot of that is linked also to to life extension, it is going to be a big outage. Ridwan, before you go, mm -hmm. in very short, simple English, what are the cost implications of this deferral? I think that was the question. Yes, I don't have the numbers. We are obviously going to talk to the contractor about that, but there is a risk in terms of, um, you know, any cost the contractor would have incurred in terms of, of uh, getting this far during the outage. Um, but we, we don't have the number right now. We need to obviously engage with uh, with the contract team and the contractor to, to, get, to get to that. But as I've mentioned, a lot of this work, though, is... Um, we, we needed to do it at some point. We just we're stopping now, and uh, the intent is then to to continue in the next outage. Thank you, Ridwan. The uh, Kyle Cohen has got a follow up question, uh, which I believe uh, both yourself, Ridwan, and and Ian can answer. To be clear, the decision to defer the outage is it an ESCOM decision? or is it a decision by Framatom, the, the main contractor? The next question comes from Dinan Erasmus of Business Day. Where, will the outage still last five months? Uh, Dinan, that has been answered. The question, uh, the, the outage will still uh, end in June as initially planned. Will the replacement of reactor pressure vessel head still go ahead? That's Dinan's question. Are you able to tackle those, please? Yeah, anytime. Kyle, I can confirm it was an ESCOM decision. So that decision was taken uh, last night by the ESCOM team. But obviously it was uh, in, you know, in discussion. We had discussions prior to it. So as I said, we reviewed the program. We analyzed all the risks together with the contractor. And I believe it was a very open and very candid dialogue, but uh, that decision was made by ESCOM, so I confirm that. Then the need in terms of uh, the reactor pressure vessel head, that is still proceeding within this outage, so that is confirmed. Thank you, Ian. Antonet Slavet also wants to know, why are the facilities not ready? Whose responsibility was it to get ready? And what will the consequences be for those who failed to get it ready? I suppose I'll answer the easy questions. Um, Sigunati Antoinette, uh, we are currently looking at uh, the reasons why we have been been, you know, put at ease as leadership that everything was in hand. And unfortunately, it turned out to be more challenging than what uh, perhaps the team experienced and uh, foreseen at the time. So what they've experienced is, is a bit different. So we are in the process to have a look at that. And uh, if consequence management is required, that will be implemented. So we fully understand the impact of, you know, the decision to uh, to the, uh, delay the, the the steam generator replacement, and we will, as I say, analyze it in quite some detail uh, going forward. But to uh, that's a question always, um, you know, will there be consequence management? Only when it's required, it will be taken. Thanks. Kyle also wants to know, uh, Jan, is it correct that Framatom is the manufacturer of the steam generators for Unit 1 and Unit 2, that is all six? And how far is Framatom from finishing and supposedly delivering 
the steam generators for unit one. Can those uh, steam generators that are already on site built for unit two be used on the next unit? Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. I would like uh, Ridwan perhaps to fill this question. Um, I can comment, but on the detail, uh, especially the first part of the, the question, I'd like Ridwan uh, to, to deal with this. Please, Ridwan. Yeah, th thank you, Jan. Um, yes, Framatov is the, the manufacturer of the, the steam generators uh, for the, both for Unit 1 and for Unit 2. They, they are, are the same um, model of, of, of steam generator, and Framatov is also the original equipment um, supplier for, for, for Kubo. So, yes, they, they, they are being provided by, by Framatov. Um, and then... Um, whether they can be used interchangeably, um, they can, but there are some activities that, that makes them unit specific. Um, and uh, which means that they would then be, when they get onto site, we have to do some work to, to weld on some uh, additional piping. And, and that makes it specific for that unit and for that steam generator. So um, they, can, they can be interchanged. But once we go beyond a certain point, uh, you'd have to, to reverse some of that work. So the, the, the steam generator is coming in, um, later on in this year. Um, we could use on either unit the, 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 the steam generators that we've currently got on site. We've prepared them specifically for unit two. Um, but there are, there are activities, uh, and we're talking to, to, to Framatum at the moment, around just assessing whether... If, if we need to, uh, we can use them on, on either unit. Thank you, uh, Torrance Kramer wants to know, could you provide an update on the license extension process? Where does it stand? What still needs to take place? And why are you proceeding with life extension work in the absence of license certainty? Uh, Ridwan? Ridwan? Okay, Jan, go ahead. No, Ridwan will take this. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, so in terms of the license extension process, we are currently, our target is for submitting the um, license application uh, reports to the regulator in the middle of this year. We have in last year submitted the application um, and that's been accepted for or review by the regulator. So we're in that process now of, of going through the, the licensing process with the nuclear regulation, uh, regulator. Um, and what we require to do to get the license extended is to do a number of studies. Uh, and those are, are, are progressing pretty well. And then to do a number of uh, maintenance and project work. So life extend, uh, the, the, the kind of the big projects we're talking about, like the reactor pressure vessel head or the steam generator replacement. Um, so we need to get those done in the next few years, those, those big projects. But uh, the actual licensing process and the review thereof starts in the middle of this year with the regulator, uh, their review. And we've been working over the last few years to do all of the studies um, to, to submit that request to the, and, and the report to the regulator in the middle of this year. And as mentioned, with that also, um, that, they will, that will prompt the public um, engagement process. And um, with, with uh, the application we submit, or the final paper we submit to the NNR, um, we will also then share with the public a public information document for, 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 to explain exactly what's happening and, and, and the details of what's in the safety report, which the safety report itself will be many thousands of, of pages. Um, the, the public information document would be though easier to access. So that's progressing pretty well. Um, and we are on track with, with the license extension process. Thank you, Ridon. Uh, do not go. Kyle feels that part of his question on Framatom is not been answered. How far is Framatom from finishing the other steam generators uh, for that's for unit one? How far are they? So the uh, the next two, if I may, Sikonati, uh, the, the the next two steam generators, numbers four and five, are will be here in August, and Framatome are indicating that uh, they've got unit five here for uh, um, 
currently plan for for November to deliver, but they're fully look, uh, are busy looking at pulling that forward to to October. Um, and I think then the the other question I think raised also by, by Carl was, um, are they interchangeable? And there are ways of, of of being able to use the existing steam generators on on either unit, but with some some additional work required. Thanks, Ridwan. Uh, Terence, colleagues, we've only had questions from four people. Terence wants to know, will the deferred unit two shutdown also be for five months or can it be shortened? That is this 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 outage for, for the SGR that is now planned for next year. Will it still be five months? Ridwan? So the, the next outage on unit two, um, it, there, there's quite a number of additional. So as, as we going forward in the next few years, we with life extension, there's a number of other activities also. So similar to this outage, we're going to continue with a lot of maintenance in next outage as well. So it is likely to also be five months. But uh, we still need to 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 obviously now. Um, review that schedule based on on the work um, and, and just having made the decision yesterday. Thank you, Ridon. Uh, colleagues, we have run out of questions. Uh, Ridon, I'm going to ask you uh, to do this summary, please. Uh, uh, particularly pertaining to, to Terence's question about the licensing process. Uh, the power station as it stands now, the license expires for unit one in 2024 and 2025, and the extension is meant to take it all the way up to 2045. Please confirm that, that we will still be operating the Kubek power station safely during this period, and, and we are still within the licensing threshold. Is that correct? That is correct that we, we, we uh, the, the licensing work we're doing is to get to 2044 and 2045 for the two units. Um, as mentioned, we do need to get the regulatory approval. There's there's a process that we need to follow. As done, I think at any other power station where, but I think at any other power station where, where life extension was required, that the regulator needs to, to approve that life extension. Um, we are confident having done um, 99% of the engineering work already. So there's a solid case to that we'll put forward. And um, we've also, we understand exactly what it is that, that needs to be proven, what needs to be shown. The, the regulator has issued um, sort of the recipe in, in the regulatory guidance documents. So um, yes, the, we currently have the license until 2024, 2025. With the work we're doing um, and the application to the regulator, that will then extend our license up till for an additional 20 years. So, I hope I've answered your question. I realize sometimes you, if you know too much, then you tend to confuse uh, the situation, possibly. Yes, you have. The part you have not answered to Dinin Erasmus's satisfaction is. What example can you provide of a facility that has not been ready for this SGR to proceed, please? Yeah, so um, I think, well, one of the examples is the uh, the, the building where we would uh, store in the, 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 the old uh, or original steam generators when they are removed. Um, uh, however, with with the work that's being done now, we've actually managed to get that back on to, to back on track for for being ready for, for for this outage. So we've had to accelerate some of that work with, with the facilities. Um, and and I think the yeah so so that's one of the examples the the, the building where we'd house the the old steam generators. Uh, and maybe if, if I can just elaborate on that, and that is that building is required because the steam generators, when they are removed, will be radioactive and um, therefore need to be housed in very specific conditions. And that's why we've, we've constructed this building, which is now 95% uh, completed. 
uh, and that needs to be finalized now in the next next few days. Thank you. Ridwan, thank you. Now, as uh, again, uh, uh, in closing, I'm going to allow you to give us, to tell us what this deferment does in terms of operating the plant. Uh, are we still safe? Can ESCOM operate this particular unit safely until the next outage, the SGR in, in, in August 2023? And is the regulator on board on this? And thereafter, Jan, uh, please do give us your closing remarks once Ridwan has spoken. So what, what we have confirmed with the inspections we've done on the steam generators over, as I said, for, for, for a number of years now, is that the condition of the steam generators remains acceptable for, for continued operation. But part of that assurance that we get is to inspect it every outage, that inspections um, needs to be con concluded. And um, that, that work um, is part of the work that we do will be doing during this outage. And as mentioned, we inspect every outage to confirm that. Uh, that the condition remains acceptable. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, so therefore, once we get that, uh, once we complete, when we start up the unit, we confirm that it can run and the steam generator is, is fine to run until the next outage, which is planned for, uh, which will happen in, in August of next year, 2023 on unit two. Um, and uh, so, so from that perspective, we have uh, that confidence that, um, and, and and based on the history that we've had from not just Kuburg, but from the industry, that uh, we'll be able to run safely until the, the steam generator replacement occurs. Thank you, Ridwan. Uh, Jan, please, any closing yeah. remarks? Yeah, thank you, Sigmati. Um, we are experiencing, as we all are aware of, that um, the capacity that we have available is not always sufficient to supply, you know, what is uh, demanded uh, over and above the fact that what is required to grow the economy. So this played quite a, an important uh, part in our decision late last night to rather defer this team generator replacement project to uh, the next outage. Uh, in order to make sure that the 920 megawatts is available, uh, you know, in terms of capacity for the country. So, however, what we now need to make sure, and when we had the discussion last night, uh, you know, with Framatone, I specifically asked them in person that I would like to know all the requirements uh, in detail, what uh, needs to be in place and by when it needs to be in place for the next two outages. This is now for unit number one, and then for unit number two that's currently in an outage. That we make sure that we are 100% ready, that when we open the breaker, that we don't find ourselves in a situation where we are. Although there is time, as Ridwan has said, um, you know, up until, um, you know, the middle of 2024 and 2025, you know, for life extension uh, license, uh, I would like to make 100% sure that we don't push everything right till the end because life is not fair and that's that we all know. So things will go wrong. It is now to make sure that these uh, outages uh, and when we plan projects like the steam generator replacement, that it's executed successfully and in time and that we do not find ourselves in a situation where we are now. So again, uh, thank you for, for your time today and your understanding. So thanks. Uh, Sigunati. Thanks, Ridwan, for your input. Thank you, colleagues. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us at such short notice. We will publish the recording of this meeting as soon as possible. And and uh, thank you again for your for your attendance. Have a good weekend.
All right, ESCOM there just elaborating on why they've decided to defer their steam generator replacement. They were supposed to do it during uh, the current outage that they have. Uh, the Kuberg uh, nuclear power plant is set to uh, reopen in June, but they've decided to defer the steam generator uh, replacement to next year, August next year. They say that they don't want to prolong the outage because it will impact, uh, it will impact supply uh, for expected demand during the winter months.